Good morning, good evening, and welcome to this week's Fiverific Live Craft and Chat, where we are crafting and chatting, but Christmassy, Christmassy. So I am, um, I'm trying different audio. I'm trying some different stuff. So let me know if you can see, if you can hear all that sort of stuff. I do have a little bit of Christmas music playing in the background. Hopefully you can hear that as well. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. We might have to turn some things off and jiggery pokery. Uh, in my cups today, I have got just stock standard white tea. Well, it's black tea with milk in it. White tea? Is that is that it? No? I don't know. You can see and you can hear. That is awesome. Oh, yes, I found a Christmas shirt. Woohoo! I'm really happy. I've got this little pile of, of geeky Christmas shirts that I absolutely love. And I could not find them last week. And you know what? I still can't find the pile, but I found this one and I did a dance. It's one of my favorites. So uh, I was very, very, very happy. Good morning, John O'Brien. Thank you so much for being a channel member for 25 months. That is, it's crazy talk. It's crazy talk, but thank you so much for always being supportive and jumping in on the lives when you can and being an active member over in the Facebook group. I really appreciate you being here for so long. I know people's tastes and lives and things change and it's just like that's over two years. That's over two years. And I know some of you have been around longer. I know John's been around longer than that, um, but that is awesome. Um, Bianca loves the t-shirt as well. Artsog can see and can hear and all those good things. That is excellent. I'm um, trying to make it. So, um, there were some comments from last week's video, I think it was, that was saying that my, my audio was out of sync. So I'm trying some stuff to try and sync the audio up a little bit better. I don't know if it's, if it's going to work. I really don't. But I'm going to try some things and, and we'll try and make this better for us all. Um, Kathy Bryer has also jumped in with her members chat with a big smiley face. Kathy, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, can you guys hear the Christmas movie or the music or did I turn it down so much that um, you can't hear it? It might be at the end of a song. Let's see what starts up next. Hang on a second. Let's have a look. There we go. There's something there. Uh, Bianca's saying that she said that she hadn't noticed it being out of sync before, but she feels like it's out of sync now. Okay. Um, I don't know what to really do about that. Uh, can you hear the music now? Because I think it was actually switching tracks right when I was talking about it. I'll turn them up a little bit louder. I don't want to make them too loud. It's the problem. I just wanted to be in the background a little... Not hearing the songs? Still not hearing the songs? Hello, hello from Norway. It's 1am, oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much for joining us at 1am. That is awesome. That is awesome. Okay, you guys can hear it now. Oh, that's good. I was so worried. I had the slider right down because I didn't want to be like, you know, overpowering. So you can hear it a bit. You just need to hear it a tiny, tiny amount. Um, let me look here. Mitzbin Girl says, I didn't notice you were out of sync until you said something about it. Okay, now you can't unsee it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. All right. Well, I don't know if we've fixed it, if we haven't fixed it, if you can hear the Christmas music. If you can't hear the Christmas music, I don't know. Um... You hear, the, you hear me before you see the lips moving. I mean, I'm going to try something. Let's see if this makes a difference. Are you ready? All right. I don't know if that'll make any difference. Let me know in the chat. Oh, I was in sync for Sally. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't know what to do about all this stuff. It's so bizarre. How can I be in sync for someone and not someone else? It's so weird. I don't even know what to say. Oh, anyway, good morning, Leslie Grant. It's great to see you here. It's great to see you. Um, that is cool. What's really weird now? 
Oh, good point. All right, are we ready? So, because I'll be honest, it's all out of sync for me. Um, because of, I've got, you know, the camera, which is perfectly, and then this one's a little bit slower and that one's a little bit slower and then YouTube's like eight seconds behind. So, seems to be a better sync. Okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna leave it. I'm not gonna mess around. I'm not gonna play with things. Um, we are done. Vampy says, the higher the, I set the quality, the more out of sync you are. Oh my gosh, okay. That was definitely out. Well, I did change the audio, so let me change it back. All right, I'm going to stick with this one. Oh, you heard the clap of, yeah, it probably did because we've got the camera going through one bit of software into another bit of software, then off to YouTube. And then for that one, the audio was going straight through into the first, the second bit of software. So anyway, yeah. All right, we, we're going to just have to run with it because when it's out of sync for some and not others, I don't know what to do about that. If it was out of sync for everybody, um, that would make sense. <laughs> I don't know. I really, I don't know the answers. I don't know the answers. Okay, let's jump into some Christmas craft here. So first things first, I, I've been working very hard on my Anna and Carlos Christmas stocking. So it is coming along. My colour work, let's not look too closely at the colour work, okay? I do come, like sometimes I'll be like, oh, this bit's looking good. And then I'll do something dumb, like pull it tight or whatever. So I'm going to... I'm going to push the keyboard out of the way and go like that. Um, so, you know, we're up to day 12. I finished my day 12 this morning before day 12 or 13. Whatever was released like five hours ago, that's on here. So yeah, the second half of the snowflake, that is it. Um, I did come a cropper and have to redo the heel like three times. I'd made the mistake of trying to work a heel with three hours of sleep. I don't recommend that. When sock knitting is not your jam and it's the first time you're doing this sort of thing, this sort of heel, or at least I haven't done it for a really long time. I, I felt like I knew it, but I didn't and it was weird. Anyway, I ended up having to pull the whole heel back and re-knitting that bit and then doing that bit, but I did it Monday because Sunday I was toast. Um, so, yeah. So that's where I'm up to with that one. And I am really enjoying it. Although I am definitely going to run out of my yarn. Um, my meterage for this yarn was a little bit different than um, their suggested yarn. I think I was about 25 meters short per ball. Um, luckily I do have a second ball of each of these. So um, that will make a big difference there. So I'm not, I'm not worried. I just wish I could have done it with one ball of each. I mean, I don't know, we're, what, 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 we're halfway through and I'm definitely more than halfway through the white. Probably only about half, hang on, maybe I could, I'm going to get the scales. We're going to need, we're going to need to make a get the scales song, aren't we? We really are. Hang on. I have scales. All right. So let's, so let's just... You know, so, 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 so. We get 24 clues. We're up to the 13th. So we are past halfway. So, you know, obviously I have no idea what colors we're going to be using the majority of. So that one's 20, nearly 22 grams left. I didn't weigh these before we started. That one's 23 left or nearly closer, closer to 24. And then this one is 14 and a half, 15. So I definitely think I'll need more white, but I, I mean, I may get away with the others. It really depends on, you know, what the pattern ends up being because you know this this one was like predominantly green these ones are both predominantly white so maybe we'll have something that's predominantly red next i don't know what do you think do you think there'll be something predominantly red to kind of balance it out 
So that one's predominantly red, predominantly white, predominantly green, and then white again. I, and we've just done like a full row of red, so I think there's going to be red in the next one, you know. But in saying that, we did a full row of red here and then started green. So they, they're tricky. They're tricky boys who do tricky things to make it tricky for us to do this stuff. But anyway, I'm really enjoying it. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'm also enjoying the fact that I don't, it doesn't have to fit anything. <laughs> it doesn't have to fit anything. I'm not like worrying about gauge or fitting or having, you know, like loose floats or anything like that because it doesn't have to fit anything. It's decorative. It's allowed to just look good from that angle. So yeah. All right. So let's have a look in the chat here. Um, it is huge. It's well, it's a stocking. It's not a sock. It's a Christmas stocking. You're supposed to put gifts in it. Um, if, but it is bigger than I anticipated. Um, that looks amazing. Thank you, Knit Spin Girls. I'm having a lot of fun with it. John says he's working on his mosaic blanket and not looking at the sides, which aren't square. All right, none of us will look at the sides of John's blanket, but you might be able to block it square if you really want to. Um, Bub has made it. It's good to see you, Bub. Thank you, thank you for jumping in. I know your internet's not always awesome and you're a busy, busy lady. John says I should go get some socks. My feet are cold. Well, I mean, yeah, that, that works. Where will you hang it when it's done? I, I don't know. I don't know. We do have, um, in our living room, we do have this timber, um, it's not a hutch. It's a, it's like a, a uh, it's sort of, it's a hutch, like a credenza thing. It's big. It's like, I've got all my DVDs in it. It's got doors and drawers and stuff. And we normally hang our Christmas stockings off that. And I think this could look lovely hanging there. But <coughs> in saying that, Usually we have our Christmas tree right next to that. We're moving our Christmas tree. So our Christmas tree is going to be next to the piano this year. So I don't know. Maybe maybe I could hang it off the top of the piano. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I wonder if Abby's been learning any Christmas songs. Actually, I know she hasn't. I'm just dropping hints because maybe she can hear. Anyway, I'm going to pop this over here. So that is the Christmas stocking. Now, the other thing that I have done was last week I showed you how I'd made the mini bauble. Um, oh, there's options. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely options. It's just a case of choosing where. Um, but then I also made one of their full-size baubles with the snowflake motif. So there's that one as well. So these need to be um, blocked or steamed. They steam them um, and then stuffed and, you know, that one I've already woven the bottom in. This one I've still got to weave the bottom in. I haven't done that yet. Um, but I do have everything here to block it. So if we want to block it, although blocking on this table might shake some stuff around, I'll see. Um, so we've got that going. I need to make some more red Christmas stars. Um, so I'm just running through the things that we can work on today. But one thing that I did get is, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do this. So you guys know how I have recently become mega obsessed with Hobie yarns, right? Like I, because I'm in Queensland, everywhere normally does beautiful acrylics or beautiful walls. And like, I like both those things, but I'm not gonna wear them. Or uh, very rarely will I wear the wool. Um, and I will just about never wear acrylic. Um, in saying that I am in the middle of making something that is an acrylic wool blend. So there's always exceptions. But Hobie, which in my mind, I've always seen them as like great for the, the you know, the, the, uh, I just happen to have some cotton They're just, they're great for like, you know, cotton for blankets. Where's their label? The cotton for blankets, which I just love. You know, like all of the different cakes and cotton king shadows and sultans and, and all their amazing cottons, like we, and um, the wool cotton blend that I got for my sweater that I did. Well, I recently placed another order. Part of it was because I wanted some more, you know, sock yarn, right? So that's kind of how it happened, is I wanted some sock yarn. But I also, I want to make some pants. So from Knittitude, she's got these cable joggers. There's a group of us that are going to try making them. 
and I wanted them, but I wanted just some cheaper acrylic because I'm probably going to wear them just the once. I mean, I may wear them more if they're comfy, but you know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to get involved. I'm going to join in. I'm, I'm hanging with the gang and I'm going to knit myself pants, which feels weird even saying it, but I'm going to do it. So Knititude's cable joggers, I think they're called. So I wanted, I wanted some extra sock yarn and I wanted the yarn for those joggers, right? So I really think I've done the wrong math for the joggers in all honesty, because I'm looking at the yarn thinking, is that really gonna make pants for me? Is that enough? Is that enough? So it's probably not. So luckily um, Hobie usually, you know, I may have to make shorts. <laughs> Who knows? But I might be able to buy more of the yarn. Anyway, while Hobie is well known for their cotton um, and their cotton whirls and cakes, our Cable Crush joggers, thank you so much, Kelly, for putting the link in. And also Sal for popping in um, my affiliate link for Hobie. I really appreciate that as well. But what I, what I ordered was because I've got the tickliest throat this morning. It's terrible. What I did was I went deep diving. I did a massive deep dive on the Hobie website and I bought some stuff that was a little left field. Do you guys want to see the left field stuff that I bought from Hobie? It's like, how do I put it? It's nearly like Hobie luxury. That's how I think of it as Hobie luxury. So if you want to see the extra yarn that I've recently bought from Hobie, it arrived in two satchels, FYI. There's a lot of it. Um, and so I would love to show you that, but I just need to point out to my family that they are both talking very loudly next to my studio. So I'm just going to talk to them about that. So Abby's been away. So she only just got back like one minute before the stream started. So, all right. So yes, yes, absolutely yes. <laughs> okay. So first things first is this a bucket. See, they're so luxurious. I've had to put them in bucket. They go in a bucket. Let me just change angle here. Okay. So let's start with this one, which is a cotton silk blend which it just, it feels amazing. Honestly, it feels so good. Um, it's 78% cotton and 23% silk. It feels fantastic. The camera is not doing the color justice. If anyone here has bought Tiff before, it's basically like Tiff. It's basically the really beautiful Tiffany bright blue. It's gorgeous. And it just feels amazing. So I have six balls of this. So it's their friend's cotton silk, which is really gorgeous. Then I also purchased this one here, which I've messed up a little bit. That's why I keep patting this one because if I'm going to, it's the Fibra, Fibra Natura Bamboo Jazz. And it is a, it's made in Turkey. It is, where is your 50-50 cotton and bamboo. And again, feels amazing it's a gorgeous purple the colors aren't really showing up super well let's see if i can let me just so that's the purple and that's the blue anyway so that's those ones there's more there's a little bit more This one I don't have a container for yet, okay? This is just black. It's just beautiful black linen, linear, which is 37% viscous, 34% linen, and 29% cotton. It is not showing any contrast at all. Let me see if I can fix that. If I was a Logi Tune controller for the camera. Where would I be? Uh, contrast. 
Do you want to go the other way? No, nope, this way. There we go. No, nope, that's as much contrast as you're getting. So you can actually see some strands there, but I can't leave it there because that's the weirdest contrast in the world. Let's bring it back there. But it is, it's, it's, it's like, we all know linen, linen feels a little, a little rope-like, but this, because it's also got the cotton and the viscose, it's very, it's quite soft for linen and I can't wait to work with it. But I think um, another six balls, another six balls, so 300 grams of each of these should be enough for some tops should if i had a pattern before i bought them that would work right and then this is what i'm making the pants out of pants um the amigo melange 100 percent acrylic very soft it had very similar meterage to the yarn that um, that was recommended for the pattern. Um, it's not a plain colour because I didn't want to quite go plain, but I also didn't want to go crazy. Um, so we'll see how they go. We'll see how they go. But anyway, so these are the these are the, the ones that I bought. Um, let me. What couldn't you hear? Oh, you couldn't hear the family. Okay, that's cool. Sue Singleton is here. She's working. But great to be here. That's good. Good to see you, Sue. Thank you, Knit Spin Girls. Yeah, the colours are oh, the blue and the, and the purple. Absolutely. They're divine. They're absolutely divine. But then, no. I may have bought a kit for something. It's been a big week for yarn delivery here. So, you guys know how... Last year, at, at, I um, last year I bought into the uh, Attic Twenty Four knit along that she, that she begins the year with, and it was the very first, or not knit along, crochet along. It was the very first anything along that I'd ever kept up kept up with and it really started my year off in a really good frame of mind and it really helped me to focus and get projects done so I've kind of ended the year off with more projects than I care to admit going which most of them have been pushed to the side because I've got Christmas decorations I want to make and a Christmas top I'm working on which I'll also show you in a moment um, but I decided I wasn't going to do it because I was like, oh, it's in it's in special DK again. I don't like the special DK that much. I know a lot of people like the special DK and I get it. And I know why a lot of designers use it because it's got an insanely good color palette. I'm just not the biggest fan of it. And so I was going to pass. I was, oh, well, I won't do it. I'm not gonna get a yarn I'm not in love with to, you know, or a yarn I know I um, is not my favorite, you know, I know that I actually don't enjoy working with. Now, there's others, there's other um, Stylecraft yarns I do like. I just don't like the special DK. Um, but they were having some problems. They were selling out of colors and unable to make kits because of color shortages from from um, Stylecraft and the Wool Warehouse was waiting on a Stylecraft order. And, and then Wool Warehouse and Attic24 had a discussion about could she make an alternate kit in their house brand of acrylic? Um, and I was like, I didn't know they had a house brand of acrylic. I wonder what that feels like. So for like 33 pounds plus postage, so we don't want to talk about what that comes out to Australian dollars. It was like 50 or 60 dollars, right? I got the kit. This is the sun gold blanket kit. Everyone who says they're not looking, you've got to keep your eyes closed. You've got to keep them closed. Um, and now you've got the option to buy it the the kit either in their, the Wool Warehouse Create brand or in the Special DK. So let's have a feel. Let's have a look.
I think is it 12 or 15 colours? Hang on. 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's 15 colours, I think. So it's it's good value. It's a good way to buy the colours. Because it's a, a crochet along, um, it's not... It doesn't um, have any instructions, but some of the other kits that you buy, you get beautiful printed instructions. So this one is the sun gold, but using the create. So 1500 gram balls. Now I have to say, I really like how this feels. I know, it's, I know some people love the special DK. This is softer. This is softer. Now, I don't know how it washes, how it wears. I've never used it before. I've got no ideas. I like that they're using a brown paper band. It's easy to recycle. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, oh, that's my concern when it's 100% acrylic. So it's like, hello, big ball of petrochemicals. Oh, look at you. You've got a pretty recyclable band. Um, I know. I see the irony. Okay. I really do. Um, but I really, I like this. I like the colours. The colours are just... They're beautiful. They're very autumnal. If you're not an autumn person, it may not be the pack for you. Um, like the tones of the colors are just gorgeous. There's a few different purples. Um, definitely worth getting your hands on. Samantha, no, I haven't finished my mosaic blanket. It's, it's on hold until after Christmas because we're doing Christmas. So we've got lots of good colors. Um, and oh, there we go. And I can't wait to get started in the new year. So this one just gets put aside. There's no guilt attached with this one because it's a cowl that doesn't start until after Christmas. Oop. And I have everything I need so I can get ready and go. I do have to keep it away because Louis tried to drag the entire bag away. So he has to stay up high now um, because he just, he's got a thing about like this. He wants to just grab that and run away. So he's down here watching me. It's like, don't tell him all my secrets. Okay. They're not the only deliveries that arrived this week. FYI, because I'm also covering Christmas balls, um, I was able to, to snag some. Uh, we have uh, we have our we really only have one proper big box store for craft in Australia. It's Spotlight. I mean, Linkcraft is still around, but it's I don't have a local store. Um, so I was able to snag a pile of Christmas stuff that they already had on sale at the beginning of December. So like this box of like. Decorations, it was $20, it was $5. I'm like, I love that. I love this. I love something else. I've got this beautiful LED star that I was going to put up here in the middle, like just stand it on something and just have it sort of in the middle. I need to realize it requires batteries and I don't, I'm out. I'm out of AA batteries. I've, I've got to add them to the shopping list. I was like, dang it. So, yeah. Um, let me have a look here. Everything is, yeah, I'm really happy with the blanket kit. I was like, I was like, oh, okay, unknown entity, unknown entity. Do I do it? Do I do it? And I went and did it and I'm so happy I did. Uh, I'll, I will probably judge it more while I'm working with it, but yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with how the yarn feels. Um, I'm always, I'm always like disappointed with special DK, but this one feels good. Um, you, oh, thank you. Thank you. I also love m my Marvel Christmas shirt. All the little Marvels with their, all their little Christmassy things. Um, so, yeah, that's cool. Uh, uh, pretty. Is it like a usual randomish colour stripes or a gradient-like thing? Um, I think it's a, I think it's a randomish colour stripes. I think it's, it's, I think it's one of those ones. Um, Actually, I'll be honest, I haven't looked into it too much. But based on the pictures and stuff that I've seen, it looks like randomish colour stripes. Doug Hewson, hello. Welcome to the chat. It's good to see you. All right. So we also have in my shopping.
first things, Macy doesn't have a Christmas ball in our house. <gasps> Are you kidding me? I've just noticed. These arrived this morning, right? They put these in a satchel. I think they're broken. Oh, no, no, no. I, no, they're not cracks. They're not cracks. I just about had a heart attack, okay? I nearly had... A, I'm like, get out. Let me look. I thought they were broken. I thought the the the... I thought that that was on the inside was cracks in the plastic. I nearly had a heart attack. I'm like, what? No. Oh. Um, so what we tend to do with, 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 we started it last year, was that we put some stuff in here. It's, it's like a, I can't think of what it's called. It's, we had to buy it from the hardware store and it's just a clear thing and you put it in just a little bit, swirl it around and then put a whole pile of glitter in there and, and sort of put shake it and roll it and make sure the glitter covers it and then I cricket the pet's name onto it. But my mum had the most beautiful idea which was to actually put Macy's first collar into one of these so that we could actually put a name on it and have her collar sitting in it so that we could always see that she started off this tiny adorable cat before she turned into a ginger monster. So um, that's a lot easier to get the lids off and on than the previous ones I bought. So we have these ones. So these are the eight centimetre ones. These ones are quite big. Um, oh, Sally, me too. I'm like, whew, like, I was so upset for a second there. I'm like, because like when I'm looking through the bag, it looked like all of them were cracked. I'm just like, what? <laughs> so um, they can go back in. And something I'll say, right? Like, this is how they've come. Like, they've got their little packaging thing. You take that off. You can actually pack your Christmas decorations back away in the bag once they're made and store them like that because it's an organza bag. Like, I love that idea so much more than a cellophane plastic bag that you just got a bin. This is a permanent storage solution. Like, I love this a lot. I've, I mean, I've got, a, I've got a penchant for organza bags, but I love it when things just come in an organza bag. That is great. Anyway, I've got two packs of these because we ran out. And I don't like it when I run out because it means I can't sneaky fast make something for somebody who turns up unexpectedly. So I've got I've got those. But there's more. I got these ones. Because look at them. They look like bubbles. Like bubbles. But they're just they're just um, an iridescent bubble pack. They're just a little six centimeter ones. But what I was thinking of doing is actually just putting crochet over the top of them. So crocheting like a, a, like a little bucket so that you can cinch it at the top and pull it around and tie a bow in it. And then you can actually remove it if you need to um, and all that sort of thing. So I've got those. Um, and if they didn't arrive in time, I was just going to, I'd stolen, a, I'd stolen an ornament out of our Christmas tree box from, you know, who knows when I bought this. But I stole that one because it's actually the same size. And, and I was like, I'm going to make it to match these and go from there. So now we now we just need to make some stuff, guys. So I want to start with the st a star just because I know how to make the star. And my hands are, I've had extra ventilin this morning, so I'm a little shaky. So I thought I'll start with something I'm familiar with and go from there. Are you guys all right with that? And then we will start with covering a bauble. Move the rubbish over there. We don't need you rubbish. Alrighty. Randomo scrap of red. Just a scrap. That's a bit of, believe it or not, this is a little bit of four ply. This is some uh, Wanda that I hand dyed, some four ply hand dyed. Um, I'm going to just, it's on a weird angle there. I'm just going to, nope, not fixing it. All right. Now, I'm sure I saw a video to learn how to do these. I'm really sorry to the original creator. I don't know who you are um, because I watched like a million videos, found like six different stars that I actually like. And I don't know if I just mushed them together and made something or, or if I'm actually following someone's exact pattern. But, you know, I learned this a long time ago and who knows. So um, I like a um a magic loop 
and you don't have to. You can start with whatever you want. So if you want to do two chains and work into the first chain, but I want to make 15 trebles or double crochets if you're in the US. So whatever you make has to be able to hold that. So if you want to do a chain loop, I would start with maybe four and, and four chain loop and join um, or a magic loop gives you a bit more freedom. I'm using um, sock weight yarn and a three millimeter crochet hook. You guys will need to work out whatever you want to work with. So technically this is not a tutorial, but I'll have a quick talk through what I'm doing here. So I'm going to crochet 14 more trebles here um, or double crochets, depending on where you're from, which I started with a two chain start. I will include the two chains. Some people do a three chain start. For me personally, when I do three chains, it ends up baggy and loopy looks terrible so I tend to do two chain starts instead of three chain starts look see it's such a splodgy mess that there is this here Doug Hewson has gifted a fiberific channel membership Doug you're a champion thank you so much for for doing that Shannon got it oh that's amazing thank you so much Doug for your generosity and sharing a channel membership we've got some stars here oh it's a shame that the um the member it doesn't show that Shannon received it but Shannon um like in Streamyard, I should say um Shannon received a special Christmas gift from Doug Doug's a legend um Thank you. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm like, my brain's like to fix the knot. But no, I want to say thank you very much for sharing that gift of a, a free channel membership for somebody. That's really kind. I always, get a, I always get a bit funny when people gift the memberships. It's because it's special. It's not just, they're not just doing something for themselves. It's something for, it's something for someone else, which is always special to me. So thank you. And Shannon, welcome to being a channel member. Okay, so two, four, six, eight, nine. I got rid of the knot. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And 15 I just want to double check I've got the right number now I am counting that initial two chain at, at the start as a treble because I need it so it's two four six eight ten twelve fourteen fifteen and then pull on the tail just to bring it in a bit join with a slip stitch into the top okay we can you can cinch that up tighter if you want to um, but you don't have to. I need a drink. Uh, hello. I mean, is your channel name Eyes? I'm not sure. But hello. Welcome to the chat. Okay. Now, from here, we've done our slip stitch. Now we want to chain six. And then... Snyder Spindles is in the house. Welcome. Merry Christmas, Scott. Um, and then from our six, we count back to the third chain. One, two, three. And in that third chain, do a single crochet. Then in the next chain, do a half double crochet. Then in the next spot, do a treble or a, or a double crochet. And then in the next spot, do a double treble or a um, triple treble. It's double treble, triple treble. <sighs> the next one up. Whatever the next one up. It's very confusing having two different crochet languages. Okay? <laughs> two, three. Then from three across, so, so we're in one here. So then one, two, so that's three in total. Slip stitch there. And that's the first point of your star is done. Okay, then we've got um, 
Are you watching Broidery? My mother loved it so much. Yeah. I'm terrible at, at needle crafts, but I like yarn crafts. I can't count. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we do the same thing again. So count back three. One, two, three. And then do a single crochet. Then a half double. Then a double. Oops, I didn't get into the right spot there. Into a double. Oh, and then I, I went into the right spot and didn't pick up the whole stitch. And then a triple. So that was in the US terms. Single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, then triple. Then skipped one, two, work into that one. So work into the second. We've done our second point. Um, are we are we doing the dice roll? We didn't dice roll for mosaic last week. Are we doing dice roll for mosaic? I don't know if we are. Okay, then we do six chains. We'll say this one in the Australian UK terms. So one, two, in the third chain, we double crochet. Then in the next one, we do a half treble. Then we do a treble. Then we do a double treble. And then we skip one, two, into the third. And we have our third star leg. Star leg. All right. So I'm just going to just zoom along while reading the chat. Um, yeah, I was, I was going to hold off till after Christmas. So I don't know. What am I doing? I've got no idea what I'm doing. Did I get six? One, two, three, four, five, six. I did. One, two, three. Then we do that. And then we do one of those. Does anyone else have a favourite crochet stitch? I legit have a favourite crochet stitch and it is a half double or a half treble crochet. It is legitimately my favourite crochet stitch and I get excited when I have to do a project that has a heap of them. Uh, I think I've botched something here. I think when I was counting I needed to skip three not two because now I've got all these stitches across here for the head stitch so I'm actually going to pull them out and go back and fix it because I don't like it when it's not right okay oops do the right stitches and also, am I the only person who just goes, oh, man, and just rips it out no, and doesn't even second thought it and just goes. Okay, so what we want to do is actually, it's not the third stitch. We, it's not the third stitch from the slip stitch. It's the third empty stitch. So one, two, three. Okay. I'm sorry if you were following along. I'm very sorry if you were. And now you've got to rip it out as well. I hope you weren't following along um, because that would be really sad if you all have to do that. But I am doing this from memory. So, you know, I could screw it up at any moment. Did I do enough st stitches here? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, and then six. Then we skip three. One, two, three. Work into that third one. Well, we skip two. Work into the third. I'm sure there's amazing people on YouTube who teach phenomenal skills on crochet. Explain things exceptionally clearly. That's not me today. 
Now, usually on our schedule, we have a one, two, three. We usually would have a productivity stream this weekend. There will be no productivity stream this weekend. I need to do some things in my house and get them ready for Christmas. And I had to sort of sit down and make the decision of should there be no product productivity stream or no Thursday live stream. Um, and I went with no productivity stream. I mean, it would have been easier, I think, just to do the productivity stream and then I can shut the studio down because I'm not doing streaming on my other channel for the rest of the year. Well, for the rest until after Christmas. Um, but I decided to, to not do that. So, but there will be <clears throat> no productivity stream this weekend. One, two, one, two, three. If you need, you can always go back and watch the previous ones. They're always there. I don't take them down. Sally says, I did enjoy the linked half double crochet when I designed my top. Oh, that's a nice stitch. I like the half double crochets in the third loop. Oh, yes. They look amazing, don't they? Oops, so then we go one, two, three. Ah, oh, see, look, it's, it is, it's sitting better already. I should have realized it sooner that I was doing them in the wrong spot. And the thing I love about these little stars, right, is you can do them in any yarn, any color, any size, as long as your hook matches your yarn. So you can make them big or small whatever you need. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is the last one. And then in we go. How are we going? We still got Christmas songs playing or have they finished? I think the playlist. Oh no, they're still going. They're still going good. Are they still going? Now they're going. I don't know what happened. Um, we're making a Christmas star. Now I can't work out where I'm up to because I got sidetracked by shiny things. What it was is the audio meter wasn't moving when I wasn't talking. One, two, three. In it goes there. Then in here. Then in here. Then a double in the last one. And then one, two, three. So that one, it matches up with your first one. So it, it goes back into that one that your first one came out of. So it's all even and the right numbers. Okay, now you can finish there if that's what you want to do. You can totally finish there. But I tend to do something which, eh, whether it's right or not, I don't know. But this is what I'm going to do. I mean, I'm going to show you. Um, let me look here. Oh, I missed. Um, I'm Hobie Obsessed. Love all the ones you just mentioned. Plus some. Oh, yeah, me too. There's quite a lot that I'm like. I actually am finding with the Hobie yarns. I'm not finding many I don't like in what I've ordered so far. Because I also have some of the beautiful sock yarns as well, which I love. Um, let me just. Does that mean you're packing up your studio? So will that be alive next Thursday? Yes. So what I'll be doing is focusing some energy on the rest of the house and getting some things sorted. And in here, there's a little messy corner. So I want to get that messy corner sorted out so that I can actually store some stuff from the house in this room. But what I'm going to do is keep a clear path to this section, like a, just a little path 
so that I can come through to live stream for next week. Okay, so there will be one next week. There just won't be. Um, there just won't be one in on Saturday because I'll use those to- that time for some for, for you know cleaning is basically what it's coming down to. We'll use it for cleaning. Um, let me look here. Um, can I write the pattern out for us in the fun zone? I can try. Um, I'll, I'll see. I'll see. I'll try. I'm not going to promise, but I'll certainly try. Um, I see this amazing thing. There's a lady who does this thing where she like lays out her thing and takes a photo of it and then overlays the chart stitches. And I'm like, I love that idea. I love that idea, but I don't know how to do it. So yeah, but anyway, let's move on to, because I like to be able to hang my stars and I don't want to just, you know, I mean, you could legitimately end it off here and then just join on a little loop and tie it on to a leg. You could totally do that. That involves extra work, more ends to weave in and boo to that. So what I do is I just slip stitch as small as I possibly can just into one loop, oops, a whole loop, one loop up the sides. What am I doing there? I'm splitting that yarn terribly. I'm like, do I even have the right glasses on? I cannot see. There we go. Slip stitch up the side. All the way to the top. To the tippy tippy toppity top. And then make your chain whatever length you want. I'm going to go with 16. That'll give me about a, actually, I'm going to go with 20. I'm just going to go straight 20. And then you come back and you slip stitch back into here. Now, I, I instead of just doing that into the single loop, which I was about to do then, I was like, nope, that's not, I like to grab both loops at the top of this one and slip stitch through both loops. And then I like to just slip stitch around the entire star. I find that that otherwise these little legs, cause see how the legs are already starting to curl up and you can push it out as much as you want. But I just find that the little slip stitch just makes it harder for the little legs to curl up. They still do a little bit, but just not to the same extent. So just little gentle, not too tight. You don't want to be changing the size or the, anything of it, but just creates like a little border. I mean, you could even do all of this slips if you're going to be, if you're willing, if you're willing to do it and change colors, you could put a white border around the outside or like a green border or, or something. I think a white border on the red would look gorgeous, but it's your call entirely. It's your Christmas star. I'm not the boss of your Christmas stars. And then when you get to the point this time, because we're not going to be doing extra things, I do want to put a second slip stitch in there just so it goes around the top a bit easier. If you may find you want three, trial and error, see what you like. I like two, but work out what works for you. So see with two, that's how mine's sitting. And we'll just keep going around. Beep, beep, beep. In there, all the way to the bottom of the jar. And there we go. Um, good tip, yep. Oh, absolutely. He could definitely be a starfish, without a doubt. You could legit make him a starfish. You could get some of that beautiful pinky red and go from there. 
You could use actually, and you don't even have to make it pinky red. You could make your starfish or your Christmas stars, whatever color you want, because you're the boss of your own Christmas stars. No one's the boss of your Christmas stars except for you. Take back your Christmas control. Don't be dictated to about which colors can and cannot be used. If you want to make yellow Christmas stars, you make yellow Christmas stars. If you want to make multicolor Christmas stars, you make multicolor Christmas stars. You do you. They're also really super lightweight at this size. So if you want to hang them um, in a garland, you totally could. And if you're going to do that, I would recommend not making the loops and I would do all the little, oh, well, I would make loops. Oh, would I make loops? No, 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 I wouldn't. I'd make little tiny loops, little small loops, and then do a crochet chain and crochet through the loops as I went. So that down the track, if you decided you didn't want it as a garland anymore, you could just pull out that crochet chain and retrieve all the stars without having to unstitch them one at a time or anything crazy like that. But yeah, I'd make like little like five or six chain loops is what I would do if I was going to do a garland out of them. And then crochet through the chain loop. We are nearly back to the start. Um, yeah. So we all have different ideas about different things. And I know I did not invent this. I definitely saw at least a variation of this somewhere and I cannot for the life of me think where. It was YouTube, I know that. Um, I hadn't actually intended on doing these on a video. Scissors. Oh, these scissors. They need to go in the bin. They're terrible. Okay. And then we've got two ends to weave in. Have you ever bruised in here on a finger and trying to work out how on earth you actually bruised in there? Anyway, I have. And it just, it hurts. Like I move my finger and... I don't know what it did. No idea. No idea what it did. Um, you have heaps of eyes you could totally have. Oh, I've got huge packets of googly eyes. I could, without a doubt, add googly eyes to this, this bad boy. I could add all sorts. I could just go and get the googly eyes right now and we could play with it. Do you guys want me to go and grab my googly eye pack that I bought from Amazon for like dirt cheap? I'm like, I think I even know exactly where it is. Because that's not always the case. <laughs> oh, I caught a leg. I'm cutting off the circulation to his little leg. There we go. Yes, please. Kelly wants. All right. I'm going to give you my Be Right Back screen and I'm going to run and grab it. Well, I'm not going to run. I'm going to move quickly and then I'll go and grab it. But here is our Be Right Back screen. I don't know how loud it's going to be. I'm sorry if it's very loud. You ready? Here we go. we have safety eyes 
I will find the link for this and share it. Because this was such a good value little pack of safety eyes, honestly. So, so, and like, it's got little noses. Like, you know, it's got little black noses and red noses. And it's got some bigger noses. It's got some, like, it's got the plain black eyes in multiple sizes. I'm not quite sure. Like, this is just a glue-on nose, which I'm like, dude, I'm never going to use it ever. But I particularly like these ones with the little... You know the little eyes that that have the little sparkles so we need some little ones some little ones this is fast pokey pokey in his face there we go. So you could legit give him some little eyes. And then just, you know, put your little safety markers on the back. Squash them in. I've got them right. They're all in there. They're in a different case. But it all, they all come with backs as well. So you could totally do that. And then you could dangle them off the tree and they could they could be watching to make sure the kids don't touch the presents because the stars are watching you i mean that could totally set up a therapy thing for your children in 20 years but yeah you could totally do that and also as a garland how adorable would that be and it adds just a little bit of extra weight just to keep them hanging as well so yeah that is legit cute that's legit cute i should probably finish weaving in his ends but you could, you know, then you, but if you don't want to do it like with the little sparkly eyes, like with the little things, you could totally do it just with some colors. You could just put little blue eyes. I, I, I'm obsessed with these. I think that they, they really create like character and make things super cute. But you may be looking at something else. I wouldn't go a red outside on a red star. But just to have a look at how it looks with the other eyes, like super cute as well. Um, this actually is reflecting my light. It doesn't have any little white spots. <laughs> it's my lights that, you know, light me and make me beautiful. Um, that they, they are, hang on, we'll go to big, we'll go to big one. There we go. Hello. Hello. How would he look with a nose? Now, see, now I'm like, hmm, a nose. A little. I think the littlest nose is too big. We'll try it anyway. I would recommend if you're going to try the nose. Do it before you pull the middle and weave the ends in. I can't get the nose in. But you could totally try a little nose on there too if you wanted. Even just a I wonder if a little black one will fit in there. No, I pulled it too tight. I can't fit anything in that middle section. But maybe we can try it on the next star. Do you want me to do another star so we can just see about adding faces? So what's Sally saying here? Um, let me have a look back at the comments. It's so cute. Oh, it is. It's stinking cute. It is so cute. Um, oh, you should make a pink star. I'm like, do I have any pink handy? I don't think I've got any pink handy. I love the idea, but I don't have any pink handy. Crochet with Claire is here. It's good to see you, Claire. It's a very cute star. I agree with you. I agree with you. But yes, but I think it works with even with like even without the having the cutie eyes, like which I'll I'll pop them back in now that we've got this camera angle on. Cutie eyes. I think it works with whichever eyes. Oops. <laughs> I don't think I need three.
There you go. It's super cute. I'll just angle that the right way. There we go. They match now. Anyway, sidetracked. You can totally put eyes on your on your on your Christmas decorations. Creep out, kids. Tell them that that's how Santa watches to see who's naughty and who's nice. Ha ha ha. It's better than an elf on a shelf. Because this one's incognito and hanging out and hiding in a tree. And also, it means that like having all the um. Oops. Having all the, everything done with, um, with a slip stitch around the outside opens it out better and also means that you don't have this single strand of a yarn holding everything together. So I definitely like not having to just, you know, put a loop through sort of there. I don't like the loop off center, if that makes sense, but yes. Um, I'm enjoying seeing, oh, you are enjoying seeing the advent open on Discord. That is awesome. Um, for those of you that are new here or don't know, Fibrific has a Discord. It's relatively new um, for us over there. Uh, and we have um, lots of people are opening their, disc their, their advents and showing and sharing what they are receiving in their, their yarn crafty um, adventy goodness. So whether it's just, um, a stitch marker advent or a yarn advent or a fiber advent. There's so many, oh, come on. There's so many cute ones there. Sorry, I, my end came out. Get back in the needle. I'm like, didn't you hear me say my eyes aren't working great today and I can't see properly? So you go and jump out. So I have to try and weave you back in again. Good job. Alrighty, trim. Star is done. Now the other option is you can just, because I don't mind that. So I know some people would prefer it if they was closer together. I personally don't care. So your call as to how you do your loops, you could do them in and out of the same chain space at the top. If that's what you want to do, you can totally do that. But that's a star. Now, did we want to make another star or do we want to do a ball cover? A, a bauble cover. Baubles. Baubles. Yeah, I'm with you. Elf on a Shelf legit gives me Chucky vibes. Every time I'm like, evil dolls. It's time to top up my tea with hot tea. Hopefully it's hot. It should be hot. It's in my Yeti. Is it bizarre that I kind of use my Getty like, um, <laughs> yeah, YouTube says no, Sarah, but I'm going to show it. <laughs> I'm like, mm, really? Um, yeah, so we've, we've already got these ones, these balls that need steaming and filling. I'm not sure if you were here last week, but we filled this one last week in the live stream. So it's this, it's this, it's the same designer, so Anna and Carlos, but I've just made it with different yarns. Um, so I've they need to be steamed and dried, so um, or blocked, and it definitely needs it. You can't. I I I tried making some a few years ago, and I didn't block them first, and it just the stitches never settled properly. And this one is bamboo and cotton, and I blocked that, and it came out so much more beautifully just with the effort. I follow um, Anna and Carlos's exact way of doing it. I grab a, a wet washer um, and an iron and I put the, the wet washer down, open it, pop that down, flop it, and then iron it in circles sort of thing to try and spread it. And then I open up, flip it over, and then do the same thing again, like put the washer back down. I do exactly what they say to do. I mean, these guys know what they're doing, right? So I'm going to do that for both of these. Um, it's because you've got to push down and you know, give it a bit of welly. Um, so those ones are done. So they just need to be stuffed and sealed up. And then their little 
tie attached and those ones are ready as well. But what I was going to do today is just some crochet granny circle and then turn it into a basket as such and then weave around some chains, cinch it up. Well, weave around some chains, drop a bauble in it, then cinch it up. So we need to make it so that it stretches over the bauble a bit. You don't want it to be super baggy and look terrible. So we kind of want to just make it so the granny circle is not, you don't want it huge because you need it to sort of skim and pull so the stitches open up. So especially on, on these pretty balls that we bought, these ones that look like bubbles, um, I definitely want to be able to see some of that pearlescent through. Um, how do I open the package? This side. Is it easy to see where the tape is, maybe? There we go. Okay, they're stuck together, aren't they? Why are you stuck together? How are you stuck together? I think th this Christmas playlist is not playing through. There we go. I think I did not have it on shuffle and loop. So let's see if that makes a difference now. I think it was just, it would play a song and then stop until I started the next song. And because I'm not watching. I can honestly say undoing knots in this stuff is annoying. What the heck? This is frustrating. Come on, little dangler. Go through. There we go. All right. That was very annoying. Sorry about that. I had to fix it. Okay. Let me check in the chat here. Um, for some crazy reason, I decided that Anna and Carlos Advent Stocking would be good first color work project. First toe off. Oh no, you're embracing the challenge. I'm, I'm working on it as well. There's mine. I'm not very good at color work either. I, I tend to pull things too tightly, but I'm ha happy with this one. Like it's, because it's not going on a, on a human. That's why I'm happy. But yes, I don't know if it's the best idea for first color work and, and first sock. Yeah, probably, probably not. evil Christmas ball bouncing around. I'm surprised Louis just didn't just appear to attack the Christmas ball. Um, I'd probably do a wet block and blow up a balloon inside. I'd totally burn myself if I tried steaming. I mean, you could do that. It, you'd need to, the balloon would need to have some welly to it, honestly. Um, uh, which color are you? Winter white. Which one is that? Winter white. Because I've got, I've got, I've got some white, but I also have. What are you? I also have pearl, which I think I'll use because I'm saving the winter white just in case that needs another one. Okay. If I was the middle, where would I be?
All righty. Okay, so I need a bigger hook. I'm just going to do like um, nothing special. I'm just going to do a, a, like a, a round granny. Um, I'm just going to sort of eyeball it. It's the first one of these I've done. So, you know, bear with. So magic loop again, because it gives me a nice, it's after we learnt with the, um, with the, with these balls. The magic loop gives a nice flat um, loop. I'm actually going to do th basically this exact pattern, but uh, in that smaller yarn. So I'll just pop that there. And just two colours. Or maybe I could grab some red. Okay. So I think this is just... 12 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 yeah it's 12. I always get confused with doing the star and then the baubles because the star is 15. So this these little balls might be better off in a four ply than an eight ply. And I'm just thinking, do I have any Christmas colours in a four ply? I know I definitely have red. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And 12. Okay. So, oh, and what I'm using here, this is the Australian wool store in pear and also in the pearl. The pearl and the pear together look beautiful. So, um, I'm just going to, I'm going to carry the, the yarns at least to start with, just to see if I'm happy with how it looks. Uh, let me look here in the chat. Um, oh, that's how you block hats. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, let's look here. Uh, that looks well done. I'm not happy with my heel, so I cast on the leg separately so I can fix the heel at the end and join the two parts. Okay. I, I had to redo my heel, but um, that was because I tried tackling a heel I was unfamiliar with on three hours of sleep. That's zero stars. Do not recommend. Okay, so I'm just going to pull that green super tight so we can't see it. And then work into that. So it's two stitches in each round. Do not work over the one that we're carrying. Like an idiot. <laughs> I really do like the pearl against, like the winter white is, is definitely a white. They're, they're both creamy. But the pearl is just a little creamier. And I, I, I think I like that. If you want bright white, you might need something else. <clears throat> Drop the comment so we can still see. No, the music didn't keep playing. Is there a way to make the playlist continuously play? Playlist. We'll see. Okay two into each round so how you make a bucket is you get to the point where it's round enough and then you stop increasing it's that simple and i think we've already hit it i think that we don't need to increase any further in size I'm beginning to think it's actually already too much. <laughs> we'll soon find out. Maybe just have a little less length.
and then change our color back to the green because we won't see the back of this so it doesn't matter if your color work is a little shonky so what I might do for the next round is just half double crochet and a chain in each stitch because we do want to make it so that we can see the pearlescent through a little so I want to make some little holes so that we can see through it I'm choosing half double crochet just because it's my favorite there's no particular reason I'm inventing this as I go along I'm gonna try it up around the bauble and see how it looks in a second I'm actually thinking that it's it's increasing still so it's going to get oh it'll be all right for this round I think we'll see Don't botch the stitches where they can be seen from the front. Alrighty. I'm going to, uh, no, I was going to skip that one, but I'm not going to. And I'll grab the pearl for the chain and join to the top there. Alrighty, just pull on the back of it. See how the back's like, you can definitely see how I'm traveling, but because it's going around a bauble, no one's going to see it. So. No one's gonna know. All right, so for this one, I just, I wanna start making it so it curls in a little. So I need to pull it in a bit. So what I'm gonna do is just do two chains and then a single crochet in the gap. Now I will confess, I am used to doing this sort of thing on the bigger baubles, so I'm like, is this actually gonna work on the small ones? I don't know, we'll find out. Worst case scenario is I do have one of the bigger ones there. And while I'm using an iridescent bauble, you can use whatever you want. So if you've got like a, a bauble on a tree that's been dropped and it's all scratched up, that is the perfect bauble to get a cover. Because then it gives that bauble a new lease on life. It just gets a new cover, maybe replaces dangly, with something, I don't know, your call. And then in here, I'm doing the same thing again, but just with a green row. You can see it's starting to curl up a little. And we can actually just keep alternating between the colors and have more colors, less colors, whatever, scraps. Um, and then, you know, just whatever you want, 
however the colours you want to do it. Test different stitches. See what you like. Do you want the bauble underneath seam? Do you want to make it more solid all the way around? You can do all of these things. But the, the general rule applies that once you get the base to the sides that you want, you don't want to increase the stitches anymore because you're trying to create a basket. Um, so, uh, or a bucket. And then we want our bucket to go up to be about two thirds of the way because then we can stretch and pull it the rest of the way when we tie it on. So, so sort of three quarters of the way up is what we're aiming for. And it's always gonna change depending on the yarn, the hook, the stitches you choose, um, all of this stuff. So, oh no, it is, it's two chains, not one. Chantel, you were talking, you've missed a chain. Um, so yeah, it's always gonna change, it's always gonna depend. But the advantage is that you can just play with it and you can have some fun. And as long as you're sort of creating a bucket that can take a six centimeter bauble or a, you know, whatever height bauble that you want. Um, I don't know if we do measure the baubles everywhere the same in the world. In Australia on the packaging, it's the actual height. So when you measure from there to there. So I stick a ruler on the table, put one on the side, put one there and then whatever that height is there, and that's usually pretty close to what's on the packaging. Um, so they're not measuring the diameter or anything like that, they're just measuring the actual height of the ball. Um, are you sending out the Christmas decoration? Yes, do that, do that. All right, and then we join on to the start. And like you can you can just do more of this if you want, or you can do some row, like a row, like for me, I think it'll be about the middle point. So I might just do a row of um, granny stitches. So in the gaps, just do two, it's like three, but I'm gonna skip one. So then I'll, I'll skip that one gap and go to the jump to the next one because I don't want to increase the stitches. So, and actually this is a really good way to bring it in just that little bit more. And you end up with a nice big gap there so I can see the iridescent through it. We'll see if it works. We won't know until we do a bit more. And I also didn't check to see if I have an odd or an even number. So I might get to the end and have to do a bit of jiggery pokery to make it balance out. But whatever, we're just having some fun here. I remember how last week, those of you that were here, we were broaching the topic of um, making a, a handmade tree, like as in not the tree itself, but all the decorations be handmade except for the lights. And I, I think I'm in love with the idea. I think next year in my household, there will be a tree that is 100% handmade, <coughs> handmade um, decorations. Now, when I say handmade, I am counting baubles covered in, in yarn. I am counting that. I didn't make the baubles, but the, they're decorated with a handmade thing. Um, so yeah, so I'm like, okay, how many baubles does most people have on their tree? What other decorations do we want? I was sent through some absolutely gorgeous options for garlands. Um, after, after my little rant about I'm not sticking food on my tree only to find out that it was a crochet pattern. That was kind of funny. I told Abby about that. She, she had a good laugh. Okay, so I'm just, I will weave those in because that's a little too bulky, but for now we're just testing it out. So we put that here. That's well over the halfway mark. So, cause you, you do pull it up a little. So see how you can stretch it. So I reckon we could probably just do another row or two and then it's ready for 
sealing up. So, um, Sandra at Cherry Heart has made all of her. Has she? I'll have to go and have a look. See if I can be inspired by some of her decorations. Alrighty, a row of green. I'm thinking I'd like a granny row of green as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to off center it. As in. In the gaps. And then at the top, I'll just do a little row of the white and chains so it's easy to weave through. So I probably should have done this row down there to make it a bit more in the middle, but this is going to be a bit more up the top of the ball now. The other thing that you could do is if you're worried about it, you could actually drop this down to two stitches so it'll pull in a little bit more. I might actually do that. I am a little worried about it, which is probably why my brain went there. So I will put two stitches in instead of the three for the standard granny, just to pull in a little. Uh, I don't like it. I'm going to do three. Oh, you could do half doubles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder how, how do half doubles look as a granny? Let's have a look. Oops, get away. White, what are you doing there? You're in the way. One, two, yeah, okay, we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll do a row of half double grannies. So I get the width without the height. Now the advantage with these is they can be taken back off the baubles, moved onto different baubles, whatever that this is not a tie it on or or sew it on this is a you tie it on and cinch it and pull it up like a little like like a little bag of yarn over a ball and you can make these any size that you want i have a video here on the channel from many years ago where i did this with the the two dollar balls from big w like big outside balls like kids toys all right then join on here just drop the ball in just to double check it oh yes that half double was the best idea all right now i'm just going to do one see how we're getting we're, we're over halfway now that's unstretched so when i bring that up more that will totally so i'm just going to do a row of cream like this like the the half the single crochets with chains so it's easier to create our ending off section. So you can trim off your green, leave enough tail for weaving in. Poke that out of the way and then bring in the cream. What am I doing here? two chains half double crochet two chains all the way around actually do I want two chains yes I do I need the width I've got to keep an eye on the time today my friends I can't hang back I've got an appointment after so I need to skedampa on time today Alrighty, we are nearly done. It's a half double. No. Now 
Now, you know, these, these stitches may not be your taste. It might not be your colour. It might not be exactly what you want. But this is just to give you the general idea so you can just go home and do it however you want to do it with your own stuff. And then join in there. Okay, now I want to trim that off and end that off. So weave in your ends. I'm not going to do that. Oh, I've got time to weave in a few ends. I'm like, I won't do it now. We'll just get the, we'll get the chain made first. So I want the chain to be long enough to um, wrap around and then create a little bow. So I'm thinking, you know, like 30, 30 stitches. We'll do 30 and we'll see how it looks. Twenty one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. I can wrap around, pull, maybe, maybe forty. Yeah, we'll go with forty. Now, if you're an I chord person, this would be a good time for some I chord. So let's start with this guy here. Because I carried the yarn, um, it's me it means less ends to weave in. But you do not have to carry the yarn. You can change colours every row if you want. You can do whatever you want. You can make yours just as pretty inside as out, whereas I'm not bothering quite so much with that. I don't want it to be bulky. The bulk is more my issue. I don't want it to be super dense. She says using eight ply on a teeny tiny bauble. I would probably recommend maybe a four ply on this size bauble. And then you can get a few more rows in. You can create a bit more interest. Um, but if eight plies what you've got, we can make it work. Okay, then we've got our tops. And part of the reason why I do go to the effort, like, you know, like you could you could probably technically not weave in these ends, right? You could probably technically skip them. But the reason I like to do it is I don't want them to show through in the finished thing on the tree. Alrighty, how are you guys going? Am I am I boring you? I might be boring you. This is not our usual Thursday stream. Okay, I prefer to, and I definitely prefer to work the ends on the inside. Um, Sarah says if you don't have a ball to cover you could stop stuff them with scraps you could I would definitely be making sure it's a more sealed less um, like I would you know don't put any I, I'm purposefully making mine a bit holy because I want to see the ball if you um, are going to do that which you totally could do 100% I would make it a solid ball I would not I would make it so that there was no way for the scraps to peek through But then you could save all of these for that task. Okay, so that's the little bucket or a little basket as such. And then we just weave this guy in and out between 
all of the stitches. I was going to do it with a hook. You can do it with a hook if you want, but I've got really big gaps here, so I can just do it with my fingers. And the other option is once you tie it off, you could always replace whatever um, bobble string with your yarn. Okay, so that's woven in and out and around and around. It's still loose, okay, because I, I want to be able to get the bauble in easily. I don't want to be fighting with the bauble to get it in like I am now. Get in the bag. It's like, I don't want to be in a bag. I'm a beautiful bauble. I don't need a coat. You're getting a coat. And then just cinch it up. And tie it off. Pop it in a bow. And trim your ends. I'm, I'm not going to weave these ends in. You could totally weave these ends in if you want. I'm going to just trim them off a little long. They're part of the aesthetic. There we go. Tie the bow so it's sideways. Go away the lens and boom. That's done. And it's totally removable. You can move it from bauble to bauble. You can make it more solid if you want. You can make it more open if you want. You can see the iridescent through this one. And you get to reuse baubles that have probably seen better days. Um, um, put your hand up in the chat if you've got baubles on your tree that have seen better days. I mean, me, me. So yeah, so, and you can do it with like however many colors you want. I just did it with two just to sort of show it, but you could totally do it with one. You could do it with each row being a different color. It's up to you. But for me, I wanted to be able to have some light reflecting off the iridescent. Um, I probably next time will make it so that I just have that at the bottom and then start with the open stitches, then put the grannies in the middle, like bring the grannies down to this row um, and then do these the same up here. I do like the half double grannies. I think they look really, really solid. And yeah. So there's that one. Stay, stay put. So we've made our little star and we've done our little bauble. So let's have a look here in the chat. I'm gonna drink some tea. Mm. Everyone is busy crafting. Absolutely. Absolutely everyone's busy crafting. You like the bauble as well? Me too. I bought them because I like them as they are. So even if I don't cover them, I am still, still throw some on the tree. They look like bubbles to me. They make me think of like, you know, when you blow bubbles. Um, I like them. Um, let's have... Oh, not boring. Excellent. You're making clay spinners while watching you. Fantastic. Well, I was looking at Claire's spinners thinking they would look lovely on my handcrafted tree too. Um, uh, Vampire's off for lunch. Sorry, Vampire, I didn't see that message earlier, but enjoy your lunch. Uh, um, and Sarah likes it as well. That's awesome. I'm, I've really enjoyed this one. And I like this pear colour, honestly. this I'm a bit obsessed with this pear colour that she's got at the Australian Wool Store. Just, just a little bit, just a little bit obsessed. Um, this one was just using the Maker um, Dirty DK acrylic, not Maker, Source of Fibre. It's going to take me a long time to remember that she's rebranded. The Source of Fibre Dirty DK, um, and these have come out beautifully as well, so I'm very happy with that. So I've got some interesting, different but interesting um, the ways to do things I mean you don't even you, if, if you don't want to make the bow removable you can always cinch it just with yarn and tie it in a knot and just sort of trim it away so that there's no bulk there but I, I, I like to be able to, to remove it basically you have the option without having it just chop it off 
So, you know, like say, say something happens to the bauble. Say, say Louis happens to the bauble, right? Louis will crush the bauble. The little bag could go in the washing machine, get it get cleaned up and just be put onto a new bauble. So, although he might be, I don't know. I was going to say he might be less inclined to steal it if it's covered in yarn. No, he steals balls of yarn. So he will be just as likely to steal it. If it's covered in yarn, and I've, I've, our, we normally would have our Christmas tree up by now, but we are trying to so hard think of how we're going to deal with the tree this year. So yeah, yeah, the pear color. There's just something about it, isn't it? It's just so pretty. It's like it's like a it's like a traditionally Christmas green plus also not plus it's just a great green. Like yeah, it's it's a lovely color. Works with my face. I could wear it. Yeah, totally. Um, uh, M Macy, Macy legit helps. Macy knocks the balls off the tree and then Louis grabs them from the floor. So, yeah, good job. Good job, pets. Good job, pet sharing. But, yeah, so see how, you know, we've got it on that one. Let's see how it looks on this other one because we can just legit undo the little ties. Decinchified. Birth out the little bauble. Pop. Try it with the green bauble in the background. Get on. And cinch it up. So it looks just as pretty on either. No, we have um uh, I have a low ceiling, so it's by the time we hang the tree from the ceiling, it'd only be a foot off the ground and the cat can totally jump that high. So there we go. You just cinch that up on the other ball ball. And I think with the green behind it, it looks just as nice. So, yeah. What do you think? Do you think you guys will give this a go? Is this something you'll have a go at? I know we've only got like a little bit of time left until Christmas, but how many of you are planning on adding some Christmas decorations to your tree or to your table or, cause that's the other thing. These don't just have to hang off a tree. You could make them as part of your table arrangements if that's what you want to do. Um, you could, you know, and these, if they fall off the table, they bounce better or they sort of, when they hit, they're less likely to crush because they've got padding. So yeah. Put the tree in a baby playpen. We we did that last year because um, it's not a baby playpen. We have actually got a puppy playpen, so it's a bit bigger and it's you, you can adjust the walls and what have you. It's a similar idea to the baby playpens. Um, so we did that last year because Louis will unwrap our Christmas presents. He will. He's obsessed with wrapping paper. We have to keep our wrapping paper, you know, your tub with all your rolls of wrapping paper. That's got to be locked down because Louis just takes the entire roll um, and turns it into confetti. Um, he doesn't just steal it. He converts it. He puts energy into it and creates something new, um, a ginormous mess. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so last year we baby, we put this, the puppy pen around it so he couldn't attack. And we had to sort of make sure they were like, the presents were at least that far because he could get his little nose in and worry it closer and then nibble on it through the, so we had to sort of make it a, a biggish space with a barricade around it. The problem is Macy can just jump straight over that. And if she knocks over the tree or knocks something onto it, the chances are that the baby gate thing will get knocked or, and something will happen so that Louis can then enter. It's 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 a pile. It's a pile of like I don't even know what to do. Like never have we considered not having a tree until this year. We're just like, is it is it even worth worth worrying about? But we want the tree. We love trees. So we're thinking maybe what we'll do is we'll put the tree up, deal with the tree and the and the pets but put the presents somewhere else. So we don't have to worry about Louis gaining access and unwrapping all the presents for everybody. He doesn't destroy what's in the packaging, but the surprise is gone because you walk out and you're like, who was getting the book? <laughs> this book here, with his title, we can totally see. Um, but anyway, I digress. 
I digress. So I've got my little stars that we can put faces on. I'm totally going to make a big one for Abby's door and stick some big eyes on it. So we've got how, how bigger, bigger eye can we go? Oh, uh, there we go. I'll just drop them everywhere. We've got ones that go up to this big, so really big ones. So we, when we, we did it, this one, when we tested the eyes out before, we used this little one. So I can go up to that big. So I can make a big star and hang it off her door and just freak her out. Is that the biggest? Oh no, there's a bigger one. There's a bigger one. So she had that one and we could go up to that size. So we can we can have some fun. We can torture, no, no. Torturing people is not fun for Christmas, Chantel. Don't torture people for Christmas. Um, I just found some little ickle ones, some little tiny ones. Oh, they're all out of order is why. There's a whole little section we could, hang on a second. These ones are even smaller and cuter, hang on. Camera, focus on the star. There we go. There we go. I think that's a better size eyes for that one. Although I think the others were still cute. It's it's a tough call. Anyway, anyway, I will need to look through because these are not in any particular order. I assumed I were the little ones all the way through to the big ones, but no, that's not how it works. Closed. There we go. Something is wrong. It is not closing. Oh, there we go. They just need a little bit of jiggery pokery. It's all good. It's all good. Okay. Let's have a look here. Um, Yes, I have my handmade decorations and treasured one from the 60s on my real tree. Oh my gosh, I haven't had a real tree since I was a kid. Yeah. Um, my cats only attacked the tree when we initially put it out, then quickly lost interest. Maybe we could put the tree out with no decorations for a little while and let Macy deal with that. Um, I've seen a tree protected by a force field of tangerines. A cat was terrified of tangerines. I've, I've seen I've seen some really interesting novel ways to keep the cats out of the trees. So definitely worth trying some of those. Um, definitely, uh, like a hanging ornament on the cupboard or drawer or doorknobs. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah. If you made this made your star loop bigger as well, you could totally hang that around some doorknobs too. Um, Aspen says, I use our Christmas tree as, a, as market props so it can't go up until s Sunday after my last market for the year. Fair enough. Fair enough. You've got to do what you've got to do. All right, my friends, um, I'm going to call it just a few minutes early today just because I do have to get out on the road and go to an appointment. But I have really loved hanging out today and I'm really chuffed that we've got these done and that these arrived in time. And that the clear ones came so we can make Macy her Christmas decorations. And then we have our little stars. I'm so happy with all our little makes that we've been making, that we've been getting done. Um, and I will catch you all over, over on the Fibrific Fun Zone. I would love to see photos of your Christmas decorations that you're making or in the Discord or both. Um, and I will see you all here next Thursday. We will have a live stream next Thursday. Um, and but no pro productivity stream this weekend okay so I will catch you all later be awesome and I'll see you next time bye now